qualitative characteristic that means that there is some value there is some interpretation that goes inside in terms of analyzing and understanding the financial information to be useful information must be relevant to the decision maker and information has the quality of relevance when it influences the economic decisions of the user by helping them to evaluate the past Good morning and welcome to the third session in Unit 2 of International Financial Reporting Standards. And in this session, we are going to talk about the qualitative characteristics in IFRS. Now, this is going to be a very, very interesting session. Why? Because in this session, we are going to talk about the various factors that are involved in terms of understanding the characteristics of the statements. Now, moving forward, when we try to understand the qualitative characteristics, the most important thing is the attributes that make the information provided the in financial statements that are very, very useful for decision making. Now, when I say qualitative characteristic, that means that there is some value, there is some interpretation that goes inside in terms of analyzing and understanding the financial information. All of us might have seen a balance sheet. All of us might have seen what are the different financial statements that are being used by auditors and by the respective accountants in terms of arriving at a decision. But when we talk about this qualitative statements, there are some meaning, there is some specific purpose under which each and every statement, each and every heading is being made. So that's why I would say qualitative characteristics are very, very important in terms of arriving at a meaningful decision. Moving forward, let's first talk about the understandability in the qualitative statements. An essential quality of information provided in the financial statement is that it must be readily understandable by the users. Now, let's first try to understand the meaning here. Suppose you are being presented with a balance sheet and when you go through the balance sheet, you should be in a position to understand what is being written in the balance sheet. It should not be something that the entire balance sheet looks to you like a Latin or Greek. The ideology here or the understanding here is that when you go through the entire financial statement, it should be in such a language, in such a way that you are able to interpret it immediately. So that is why I would always say understandability from the user standpoint, the person who is using the document, the person who is going through the document should be in a position to read it, understand and analyze it perfectly. Followed by, for this purpose, it is assumed that the users have a reasonable knowledge of business and accounts activity, studying the information with reasonable diligence altogether. Now, what we assume or what we presume here is that when we look into a balance sheet or when we look into the book of accounts, we believe that, yes, you have a fundamental knowledge about accounting. Yes, you know what are the factors under which certain statements, certain subheadings are being made. Now, if you believe that you don't have any accounting knowledge at all, then in whatever manner the balance sheet is prepared, might be the easiest manner as far as possible, but still you will not be able to see that there is an activity happening or there is a meaning that is getting attached altogether. So that is why it is very, very important that the understandability is a key factor in terms of going through, in terms of understanding the whole gamut of exercise. So you need to see that you have a basic knowledge, you have a basic understanding about what is written, you should be able to interpret the statements and you should be able to make a qualitative decision using that particular statement. 
followed by information about complex matter should be included in financial statement because it's relevance to the economic and decision making need of the users should not be excluded merely on the ground that it might be too difficult for certain people or certain users to understand. Now let me make the statement simple for you. Many a times what happens is that people believe that certain things are complex in nature, certain things cannot be conveyed in the same manner as we are speaking now. So instead of conveying that complex message or the difficult context, let me just avoid it. Let me not just go about telling people or explaining people about it. But what we believe in financial statements here is that at any given point of time, please include each and every detail as far as possible. Why? Because we personally believe here that the context of every complex statement has to be understood, has to be analyzed, has to be interpreted clearly. Then only the user will feel that the financial statement is complete in terms of understanding, complete in terms of knowing what it is going forward. So that is why we say that this is the most important factor. Include all the complex factors, include all the important things that will actually add a relevance, will add a meaning in terms of the development, in terms of understanding what has been happening in for the growth, for the perspective of making a managerial decision. There are a lot of complex terms. We do understand that because for an economy purpose or for the terms of making the financial statement purpose, there might be complex terms, but include it in such a manner that yes, it is understandable to all. It should be made simpler, it should be made relevant as far as possible. Now, moving forward, let us talk about the word relevance itself. Now, relevance and understandability are two near contexts, but they have a different meaning altogether. Now, how do we understand relevance in terms of accounting standards? To be useful, information must be relevant to the decision maker and information has the quality of relevance when it influences the economic decisions of the user by helping them to evaluate the past. Now let's break it into two halves before let understanding the context of relevance here. The first thing here is that it should be relevant enough, which means it should be connected. It should be subjected to that real matter. It should really matter in terms of what we are talking, What in what context is it relevant to me. Now, for example, if we give a report of a human physiology to that of a chartered accountant, he will not be able to make any decision. If you give a balance sheet to a doctor and ask him to explain, he will not be able to explain it. So there is a matter of relevance needed to whom, to what, under which context are we trying to talk. So that is why relevance is something where you provide the correct information to the right person so that he is able to connect it. He is able to see that yes, the information is making sense for me. Unless and until you are able to get the relevance context inside, you will not be able to proceed further. And that's why we say that the information has the quality of relevance when it influences the economic decisions of the users by helping them to evaluate the past, present and the events confirming, correcting their past evaluations altogether. Now that becomes highly important for all of us to understand and take it forward. Now what happens here is that the information has the quality of relevance when it influences the economic decisions of the user helping them to evaluate the past. So what is the past, what is the present and what is the future altogether will be understood only with the relevance. Why? Because let's say that we are going to talk about the past performance of a stock or we are going to talk about the past performance of production of a company. Now when this will become relevant, when you are able to connect yourself with the correct information, that is being told and that is being added on. But if you are going to give a different set of information here 
and ask the person to connect, then it becomes a complete mismatch. So that is why information that is provided must have the quality to connect and must have the factor in terms of making the user understand what is happening in the real context. So that is where this relevance becomes a very, very important factor altogether. And you know, the current or the present factor, whatever the events that are happening, are they confirming to the standards? Are they confirming to the past evaluations? Even that has to be found out. It cannot be taken to the light matter that saying that, okay, I'm just going on with an accounting standard and it might be for any year or for any data that we are looking at. Every single data that has been entered in the book of accounts will have a relevance, will have a connection to the past performance. It has to be connected. Then only you will be able to compare and present a complete performance analysis of the company. So for every auditor, the word relevance stands of a very great importance. Why? Because that is going to tell them each and every information that will connect them to understand the future. Moving forward. Let's also go in the relevance in terms of the predictive and confirmatory rules of information that are interrelated. Now let's go here with an example. Information about the current level structure of assets holding has a value to the user when they endeavor to predict the ability of enterprise to take advantage opportunities of its ability to react in adverse situation. Let me make it very, very simple for you. Recently, most of us might have come to know across about a case called as DHFN, the Divan Housing Finance Limited. Now, this non-banking finance company got into trouble because it was not able to repay back its investors. It had gone into a lot of NPA, non-performing assets. Most of the loans had gone bad and they were not in a position to recover themselves. Now, the Divan Housing Finance Limited came to sale and there are people like Adani, there are people like the HDFC, so many people who want to look forward in terms of buying up the DHFL company. So, it is put for auction, even the Piramal Group has been trying to bid for that particular group altogether. Now, that's business news for us. But what is in reality is that... Now, when anybody wants to understand the company in terms of its asset quality and asset structure, what they will do is that they will go through the balance sheet and first find out the quality of assets the company has been holding for the last few years. Why? Because in case of emergency, in case of winding up, with the help of assets, how much money can we recover back? So if we are going to pledge our assets or sell our assets, with that, what can be the recovery level of the company? If the quality of assets that has been held by the company is of a very, very weak stature altogether, then automatically for the investors, for the analysts, the company might not sound anything great at all. The company might sound that, okay, this company is not really worth investing. So let us not go about it at all. So the quality of asset makes a relevant connection in terms of understanding what would be the capacity of the company to react in terms of emergency in case of winding up. So what is the backup they have? In what sense they would be able to go forward and adjust to the situation. So that's where I'm trying to connect the word relevance altogether. Followed by the same information plays a confirmatory role in terms of past predictions about, for the example, how the enterprise would have been structured on the outcome of planned operations. So when we talk about big companies like Reliance or l &T or Godrej, or when we talk about Hindustan Lever Limited, all these companies have spent quite an amount of money in building up their infrastructure. Now, the infrastructure will definitely have a prominence in terms of a decision making for the analysts. So how well they have been able to get a return on their investment through the infrastructure, through the asset quality altogether. So all these factors will make a relevance in terms of making a perfect decision for the accounting standards. So moving forward. In another context, when we speak about relevance, we also say about the financial position and past performance, which is frequently used 
on the basis of predicting the future financial position and the performance matters in which the users are directly involved, especially when it starts coming to dividend, wage payments, share price movements, or the ability of the enterprise to meet its commitments when they fall due. So they have a predictive value. Information need not be in the form of explicit forecast. Now, most of the time, when you are looking for the share market to pick up stocks, you would always look for a company which has stood by its words. Why that it comes into matter is that when any company whose past performance has been extremely good in terms of managing its commitments, in terms of making its payment on time, in terms of honoring its wages, employment factors, or talking about any kind of factors that has already given them a green signal altogether where they have been able to clear all their dues, where they have been able to clear all their salary requirements, commitments, dividends, wages, all those factors. Automatically, that stock becomes a very good pick by any of the analysts. Now, recently, there was an issue that a Bangalore-based company known as Vistron had gone into problem because the management failed to pay the dues in terms of salary. Now imagine for a while, if the Vistron company wanted to go tomorrow for an IPO, the question that will be raised by the investors is that due to the lack of commitment that happened few months or few days before in terms of non-payment of salary will definitely create a black mark on the IPO on the investment altogether. So like this, there are many information, many facts that will come into picture where people will make selective decision, qualitative decision based on the past performance. So the relevance to each and every commitment, the relevance to each and every standards that has been spoken about in the books of account will make a very, very good structured decision in terms of investment. Moving forward, the materiality, that is another important factor that we have been speaking about in terms of the context of qualitative statements. Now, what is a materiality? Where I talk, the relevance of information is affected by its materiality. That means if in case, that is if I'm going to talk about certain factors which have been left out because of omission, because of some mistake, then automatically this can influence the economic decision of the user and the financial statements and the factors. So what comes here is that, the actual presence of the statement, the physical evidence of the statements. If there is going to be a misstatement, if there is going to be an omission, if there is going to be an error that is going to be projected in these statements, automatically that error, that factor will have a direct impact on the balance sheet, which will have a direct impact in terms of your investment, in terms of the economic users altogether. So that is why materiality provides a threshold, a cutoff point rather than just being a primary qualitative characteristic factor altogether, which means to say that materiality will not play as an eligibility, as a qualifier altogether, but materiality will be the primary factor which will try to make you understand whether I am supposed to be in place or not. Materiality will tell you at the first level whether I am in the position to qualify in the all the statements, whatever that has been mentioned. This is something which is more from a mandatory standard rather than just being a qualitative standard. This is not an add-on feature. But materiality is a basic feature which tells about the quality in terms of your standards in accounting. So materiality is a very, very important concept that one has to follow in his balance sheets followed by with this I come to the end of this session I hope and believe that all the information provided in the session is of a great help and resource to you in the upcoming sessions we will be talking about the elements of financial statements and what are their usage altogether until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.